Okay, this time we're going to graph the surface x squared equals y squared plus 4z squared in R3. So we're going to start like usual by doing one of the traces. We'll start with the trace in the yz plane. So if we plug in x equals 0, we get 0 equals y squared plus 4z squared. And this equation um, looks a little bit like the equation of an ellipse when both of the variables on there are on the same side of the equation they have uh, the same sign on the coefficient but different values for the coefficient but this is not exactly like the equation of an ellipse because the constant term is zero and in standard form for the equation of an ellipse we would like to have one for the constant term and we're not ever going to be able to get one for the constant term here this is an equation uh, that is a degenerate case of an ellipse and so that can mean a couple of different things. It could mean that we have no graph or it could mean that we have a graph that is a limiting case of an ellipse. So we have to think about this a little bit. Think about what this equation is, what it's telling us and whether there are any values that satisfy this equation or not. Um, so the left side of this equation is clearly clearly zero. Um, that's always going to be zero. And then the question would be, is the right side of the equation ever equal to zero? So we have to think about that a little bit and think about if there are any values that would make this right side zero. Uh, we've got addition here and squaring positive coefficients on these. So uh, the only way the right side of this equation is ever going to actually equal zero is when y and z are both equal to zero. So what that means is that the origin is the only point that satisfies this equation. We can think about that a little bit like an ellipse that has shrunk down to zero uh, or an ellipse whose major and minor axes both have length zero. So uh, the only point on this cross section is the origin. And although that doesn't seem like much on our graph, that does tell us something important that tells us that the only place where our graph should pass through the yz plane is at the origin. That also means that we probably will want to plug in some other values for x um, to get other cross sections in the x direction, but we'll wait and do that a little bit later after we've already done the other traces in the other coordinate planes. So let's do y equals 0 next. When I plug in y equals 0, I have x squared equals 4z squared. And this looks a little bit like the equation of a hyperbola. If I got both of the variables on the same side of the equation, we would have opposite signs on their coefficient, which is uh, typical for a hyperbola. But again, the constant term would be zero. There would be no way to get that in the standard form for the equation of a hyperbola where the constant term is one. So again, we have to think a little bit about whether this equation is ever true, and if it is true, what values make it true. Um, on the left side of the on the left side of the equation, uh, the x squared term is always either zero or positive. On the right side of the equation, that side is also always either zero or positive. Uh, and if we just think about this a little bit, uh, we'll see that there are really infinitely many values of x and z that make this equation true. So for example, when x is plus or minus 2 and z is plus or minus 1, uh, the equation is true, but there are lots of other values of x and z as well. For example, x is plus or minus 4 and z is plus or minus 2 will work. Um, so if I want to think about finding all the values that make this equation true, uh, we might think about uh, solving this for x or z. Uh, if I square root both sides of the equation, we'll be able to do that. We want to remember the plus or minus on one side or the other. It doesn't matter which side. And we'll get x equals plus or minus 2z. Um, so in two dimensions, this is the equation of a line uh, passing through the origin. And then we need to just find some other points or think about slope in order to get the um, angles for that line correct. Um, so that, that line passes through the origin. And then I'm just going to choose some other convenient values for x or z uh, to help me sketch that line. Um, 
And I, again, I really have two lines. x equals positive 2z is one line. And for that line, x and z will have the same sign all the time. And then the other line is x equals negative 2z, where they'll have opposite sign for all the values that make that true. Um, so the first line, x equals 2z, if I pick some values like maybe z equals positive 2, I'll get x equals 4. And so if I put a point right there at 4 on the x-axis, 0 on the y, and 2 on the z-axis, if I put a point right there and then connect that through the origin and back, that should be a straight line through the origin and back, that's our line x equals positive 2z. And then if I do a similar kind of thing for the other line, x equals negative 2z, when z is negative 2, x would be positive 4. So I'm going to put a point where I would line up with the x-axis at positive 4 and the z-axis at negative 2 and y equals 0. And use that point, go through the origin and extend that line on back. I could scale off my x-axis in the negative direction as well to plot some points and help me with those lines. Okay, um, let's do one more cross-section here. Uh, when I plug in z equals 0, we'll get uh, kind of a similar thing, x squared equals y squared. Again, uh, degenerate hyperbola. Um, infinitely many values that make this true. When I solve for x or y, I'll get uh, x equals plus or minus y, which is really two lines, x equals y and then x equals negative y. And I can plot some points again to help me with the angles on that. Um, since I used x equals 4, before, maybe using x equals 4 and finding y values that correspond to that would be helpful. Um, so when x equals 4, y is also 4. So I plotted a point here at 4, 4, 0 and use that point in the origin to help me sketch my line and extend on back. And so that would be the line x equals positive y in the xy plane. And then the line x equals negative y, let's scale off the y-axis in the negative direction here, and plot a point at x equals 4, y equals negative 4, and z equals 0. And then extend that line through the origin and back, so that this point where I ended up is um, negative 4 on the x, positive 4 on the y, and 0 in the z direction. So at this point we have um, four lines intersecting at the origin, and then we have that cross section at the origin where the only point where our graph passes through the yz plane is 0. After you've done a few of these problems, when you get a graph like this, you'll probably start to recognize this. This is a typical kind of graph that you would get for a cone. It's maybe not evident right away that the graph is a cone, but once I do another cross section or two uh, for some x values, we should be able to understand why it's the equation of a cone. All right, so because I got not much for the graph when I plugged in x equals 0, we're going to pick some other values to plug in for x, and I could really choose whatever values I want, but kind of based on what I've already drawn here, it might make sense to use x equals 4, and because of the squares in the equation, I can do x equals negative 4 at the same time. So when I plug in x equals plus or minus 4, I get um, 16 equals y squared plus 4z squared. And that's a very typical equation of an ellipse, not a degenerate ellipse, but just a regular old ellipse. So I'll divide through by 16. And we get this equation here. So remember that this is going to be out at x equals 4, and from x equals 4, then I'm going to go from there, left and right four units in the y direction and up and down two units in the z direction. And if I plotted those lines correctly that I plotted earlier, those points that I get from coming out four units and then doing my major and minor axes of the ellipse should line up with those lines I drew. If you didn't plot them super carefully, you might have to fudge that a little bit. Um, but that ellipse that I've drawn there 
um, is one of the cross sections. So that when I slice this surface parallel to the YZ plane, I get an ellipse that's a little bit bigger. And uh, we'll have a similar one back at x equals negative 4. I'll draw in a little bit. Um, the other thing to think about is when I plug in larger and larger values for x, if we kind of think about the equation that we're given up here, when I plug in larger and larger values for x, we're just going to get larger and larger ellipses. So we're going to continue getting these same ellipses around the um, x-axis, centered around the x-axis, and they're just going to get larger and larger and larger. And the lines that we drew um, basically tell us how rapidly those ellipses are going to get bigger. Um, so this is a cone. This is kind of the standard kind of cone. I'm just going to sketch on the front side here. I'm sketching in some contour lines back here behind the ellipse, showing that the sides of that cone are flat. So to kind of contrast that with the paraboloid or hyperboloid, um, where the sides were curvy, um, we've got those straight sides there. And the other thing I might emphasize here, this x-axis is coming right out of the center of the cone, so it's passing in front of that ellipse that I drew out here at x equals 4. Um, we'll have another ellipse on the negative part of the x-axis, so if I go back to x equals negative 4, and then from there I go left and right 4 units, looks like my green line over there was a little bit um, too far over, so I might readjust that. And I don't know if I can erase it without erasing too much else. Oh yeah, I did okay. Readjust that green line that went back into the graph there. Okay, and then sketch in my ellipse. So I went back four units on the x-axis. And from there, I went up two and down two, left four and right four. And we get this ellipse back there. So that's the back side of the cone. Um, in general, cones will open in two directions. So they'll be kind of double-ended cones. Think about two ice cream cones stuck together at their vertex. Uh, in general, that's what a cone will look like when you have an equation like this, unless the equation has been manipulated somehow to make it so that there's only one half of the cone. So some sort of restriction where x would be only positive, or x would be only negative. Um, but in general, we've got this two-sided cone. The back side of the cone you wouldn't be able to see into. It's opening on the negative part of the x-axis, so you would just see it from the back side. And then the front part of the cone that's opening on the x-axis we would be able to look into. And so again, this is a cone. We would call this an elliptical cone since its cross-sections are ellipses. Elliptical cone.